Okay, we'll kick in. No my Harry my, welcome everyone. Welcome to this TUC webinar where we're going to share the findings from our research, transitions from secondary school, supporting school leavers to create a fulfilling life. Thanks all for joining us today. Great to see so many of you online. Ko Anna Jackson Tokawingwa. Hey Kai Fakahare O Kite Timi Na Maramatanga. I'm Anna Jackson. I manage the Insights team at the Tertiary Education Commission and I will be facilitating the webinar today. I'm joined by Bridget, Zoe and Sean from the Insights team. They carried out the research and they'll be sharing the findings and the stories they've heard direct from learners themselves about their experiences as they transition from secondary school and how they decide what to do next. So I'd like to begin with the karakia. Whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai, e hi ake ana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he hohu, ti he mauri ora. Before I hand over to our presenters, I do have a few housekeeping things to note. So firstly, just to give you an idea of who else is on the webinar today, we have a mix of government colleagues and representatives from tertiary education organisations, workforce development councils, NGOs and schools. And I think we all share the common goal of wanting to support learners to succeed. Bridget, Zoe and Sean are going to spend around 45 minutes covering the findings and then we'll have around 10 to 15 minutes at the end for questions. Given there are quite a lot of you, if you do have questions, please pop them in the chat and we'll take those at the end. And we may not get to all of them on the call, but we can follow up any unanswered ones afterwards. And we're also happy to be contacted for questions at a later date. When you ask a question, it would be great if you could help by please including the organisation that you're from, because it's really useful for us to know what's of most interest to different audiences as we continue to share this work. And finally, just to let you know that this session is being recorded and the recording will be uploaded to the TEC website after the webinar. OK, I'll hand over to Bridget now to tell us about the research objectives and the approach. Kia ora, Bridget. Kia ora Anna and kia ora koutou, ko Bridget Bermister Toku Ingoa he kairanga ho o ki te timi ngā maramatanga, ki te amorangi mātauranga matua. Uh, Zoe, Sean and I are super excited to talk to you about our research today and transitions from secondary school. Uh, so firstly, some thanks and acknowledgements to those who have supported the work. Many of you are on the call today, kia ora. And um, also to those schools who have enabled the work at various stages, in particular connecting us with learners. And most of all, thank you to those learners and akonga who have so generously shared their stories with us. You'll appreciate that it's a privilege to hear directly from those learners, so please treat the experiences you hear today and see in the report as the taonga that they are. Um, akonga have given us informed consent to share the stories that are their reality here. Uh, names have been changed within the report, but stories have not, so please treat those with care. Um, today you'll also meet two learners through video clips who've given us further uh, specific consent to share those with you. Those videos must not be recorded or shared outside of today's presentation. As Anna said, the recording of this presentation that will be shared later will have those videos removed and you are welcome to share that version with colleagues. The TC's vision is for a resilient, prosperous Aotearoa where every person has the skills, knowledge and confidence to create a fulfilling life. A crucial point on that journey is leaving school where students make a first major decision towards their fulfilling life and the pathways that they take explode with variety. The decisions school leavers make here impact their outcomes throughout life and having the right support can help them make the highest quality decisions. To understand school leavers and their experience of this decision, we've conducted deep dive research into what a fulfilling life is for school leavers and the skills, knowledge and confidence they need to make that decision. This research delivers a detailed understanding of how school leavers decide what to do when they leave school, what they end up choosing, what their needs are and the barriers they face. The report also includes specific analysis throughout for the TEC's priority groups, which at the time were Māori, Pacific, disabled students, neurodivergent students and women, and a section at the end on specific findings for school leavers choosing particular types of pathways, such as apprenticeships, university, or those who are still undecided. 
Today we're going to give you a brief overview of all the main sections in the report, but there is a lot more detail in that. So if you haven't had a chance to look at it already, please do so. It's on the TEC website. Um, and as Anna said, we're also aware that the audience today represents a lot of different areas of the sector, and so different sections will be more or less relevant to different parts of your mahi. This project is a foundational piece of research which provides the TEC and the sector with an evidence base about a key customer group, school leavers. By understanding the current generation of school leavers, we can improve outcomes not only for them but for future generations as well. Uh, we see this research as a key tool for understanding learners across Aotearoa and supporting learner-centric decision making. These insights are currently being used to inform key work programs and priorities across the TEC, including, for example, our online career planning solution and the National Careers System strategy and our investment decisions. We hope that sharing these findings more widely with you today will also provide input into your own mahi to support learner success. So an overview of what we've done, um, this research takes an, a unique, in-depth and integrative approach to collecting and synthesising four types of data. This is the first project of this kind that many of us have seen in a government agency. So we've analysed uh, data from the integrated data infrastructure, tracking actual school leavers to see where they come from, where they go to and how those patterns differ by important characteristics such as NCEA results. We've also reviewed a ton of literature on what was already known about school leavers, decisions and outcomes. We sent a survey out to all schools in Aotearoa and over 500 school leavers replied. Those results have been weighted to reflect the demographic characteristics of the entire school leaver population. And we had the privilege of travelling around the Motu, interviewing 56 school leavers in depth about their experiences of deciding what to do when they leave school. We had a particular focus there on hearing from students who might not have been as well represented in the other data sources. So each of these data sources have been analysed in depth separately, as well as then synthesised together to produce a holistic view of school leavers' decisions. Throughout today's presentation, you'll hear findings that reflect each of them as well as that synthesis. Zoe is going to kick us off with findings from the first section. Kia ora everyone. I'm going to start off by giving a walkthrough of who today's school leavers are. Um, so this page pulls out a few key figures that were important to know. Uh, the graph at the top shows the ethnicities of school leavers. Our first finding here is that a growing proportion of school leavers are Māori, Pacific, Asian or Middle Eastern, Latin American and African. 25% of school leavers are now Māori, which is significantly higher than Aotearoa's general population proportion of 16.5% Māori. Um, Māori and Pacific are priority groups for TC, and so as these learner groups grow, the work to reduce systemic barriers will also have a growing impact. Another of TEC's priority groups is disabled and neurodivergent learners. Uh, we can see that 15% of learners report difficulties that are consistent with a disability and 9% with some type of neurodivergence. Something else that was important to understand about learners' context was that 82% had additional responsibilities outside of school. So at the time that they're pretty busy deciding what to do next, they're also balancing their schoolwork uh, with paid work, caring responsibilities or volunteer work. Now we can look at when they leave school. So at the top of the page we can see 76% of learners leave school in year 13. That's increased from 71% over the last decade. So learners are staying in school slightly longer than they did previously. We can also look at what qualifications learners leave school with. So 40% of all learners leave with university entrance. Um, however, 20% leave with only NCA level one or below. That trend is moving in a positive direction though, so the proportion um, is slightly lower now than it was 10 years ago, and the number leaving with NCA level three has increased over the last decade. So we're seeing that as well as staying in school slightly longer, learners are leaving with slightly higher qualifications um, now than 10 years ago too. Now looking at where school leavers go next, uh, this graph shows what pathway they take after leaving school. 60% go straight from school into tertiary study of some kind. Within that we can see that university is the most common pathway at 30% of all leavers. And in comparison, just 6% of learners enter an apprenticeship. 
Polytech and PTE are in between at 13% and 10%. Uh, the next most common pathway is work, with 29% of school leavers going straight into work. And the next pathway is NEET, um, not in education, employment or training, with 8% on that pathway. So that gives us a bit of a big picture idea of who school leavers are. And I will hand over to Sean and he'll talk to what a fulfilling life is for learners. Kia ora koutou. The TEC's purpose and vision sets out to support New Zealanders to achieve a fulfilling life. So as a starting point for this research, we ask learners what a fulfilling life means to them. So most learners value enjoyment and happiness from, this, from their life. We see that overall, there are most important things to, to learners with 42% of learners valuing each. And other things are also important. So having a good work-life balance, continuing to learn and progress and stability. Having enough money was important to do the things I needed to do. This was more important than having lots of money where I could do anything that I wanted. And this pattern was held regardless of decile. For Pacific learners in particular, we saw that supporting my family was a really important value. So supporting my family was important to 50% of Pacific learners compared to 22% of the full cohort. This was often the number one thing that those who ranked it and it often outweighed individual happiness and their own enjoyment. So as well as asking learners what their definition of a fulfilling life was, we also ask what factors are important to them in a career path. So when it comes to a career, as opposed to life in general, enjoyment is even more important. So 81% of school leavers are motivated towards their career pathway because it's something that I enjoy or it's something that I'm interested in. Discovering their passions, their interests and what they enjoy is often the starting point for many learners to make this decision. And it's a natural in for career products and services. For those learners who do value enjoyment, the career system functions well and connects them into pathways based off this. However, there are learners with different values who do feel shut out. So, for example, those who don't value enjoyment. Enjoyment isn't the most important thing to all school leavers, particularly not for some of those priority groups. For example, Pacific school leavers value supporting my family higher than doing what I enjoy. And neurodivergent and disabled learners place more importance than others on stability or being in control in their life. For those learners who don't value enjoyment highly in their career or value something else more highly, there's no real in to engage with career planning and decision making. And this disproportionately affects learners in the TUC priority groups because they're more likely to have other types of values. There's also those learners trying to meet multiple values. So when choosing what they want in a career, school leavers are also trying to balance a number of other factors and priorities as well, including work environment, doing what they're good at, pay or and making a decision with others rather than just as an individual. So, for example, one learner said he'd just do whatever his mum needed him to do. And then there's those who don't know what they enjoy. So school leavers who find this transition particularly difficult most often say it's because they don't know what I want or enjoy. And there's this quote from Marka who really illustrates this. Miss keeps telling me to follow what I'm interested in, but I just don't know what I like. So learners who don't yet know what they enjoy can feel like they have no touch point for engaging with careers and are more likely to still be undecided on their next step. This can make it more difficult for some learners to get engaged into a career system. If at the start or if they find it difficult to connect in, they immediately fall shut out. So when thinking about how we can connect learners into the career system, we should start thinking about how a range of learner values can be an in into the system, including values like supporting my family rather than a solely enjoyment based approach. Regarding career aspirations, the graph here shows the 11 most common careers that school leavers said they were planning to pursue. So the number one career aspiration that school leavers had was engineer at the top there, 10.4% saying they wanted to pursue this pathway and it being twice as common as the next most popular career of business person. Across the group, those top 11 careers tend to be mostly professional trades and community occupations. 
And the other thing this data shows is that school leavers' aspirations are fairly narrow. So half of school leavers are planning to pursue one of these 11 careers. Some of you might know of the Drawing the Future research, which the TC conducted in 2019, and it found that just over half of primary school age children aspired to one of nine careers. That works also on the TC website. And comparing it to this, so one half of primary school age children aspiring to one of nine careers and half of school leavers aspiring to one of 11 careers. Aspirations are slightly broader by the time students reach school leaving point, but not by a lot. There's still a lot of work to be done there in broadening aspirations. As well as asking what careers school leavers were planning to pursue, we also asked them what they would do if there were no barriers in their way, and we've called this the dream careers here. Uh, the green left-hand side of the diagram shows the top dream careers, including sports person, a variety of creative type careers, and psychologist therapist. These ones are absent from the plan careers on, on the right, uh, which you'll recognize from the previous slide. In the center are careers that feature in both the most popular dreams and the most popular plans. And that pattern you'll see highlights those very visible and prestigious occupations like engineer, doctor, lawyer. Uh, for 67% or two out of three learners, their dream career, career was different than the career they were planning to pursue. Um, and for almost one in three, that dream career and planned career were in different fields altogether. So they're making a total pivot from their dream to their actual plan. These patterns tell us that practical considerations and barriers are impacting choices, and in particular causing learners to pivot away from creative careers, for example. So to wrap up this section, a couple of big opportunities for us all are to broaden learners' aspirations at secondary school as well as at primary by making sure learners have awareness of and access to a wide range of pathways and role models, and to package support and information around those most common aspirations, offering similar alternatives for those who need to pivot. So we know that practical factors and barriers are impacting learners and can make it harder for them to follow their preferred pathway when leaving school. We'll look at the top five barriers that school leavers do face. The first barrier is cost. Uh, this was the most common barrier that learners faced, affecting 48% of school leavers. It was even more of a barrier for priority groups, affecting 76% of Pacific learners and 72% of disabled learners. Uh, cost influences choices in a few ways. Uh, firstly, there is an opportunity cost to study in terms of money not earned while studying. And when there are financial pressures to support themselves and their family, some learners feel pressure to enter the workforce instead. The financial cost of study itself can also shut down uh, some or all tertiary pathways. Fear of the high costs of study and taking out loans for those large amounts discouraged many learners from tertiary study. Uh, we particularly saw it discouraging learners from longer qualifications um, and those without a really clear prescribed career pathway at the end. Living costs um, associated with tertiary study away from home also meant that many learners compromised on their choice of pathway so that they could stay close to home. And that was the case even with fees free in place. The next barrier is connections. So one in three learners said that a lack of connections to networks, um, not knowing how to get into a field was a barrier. Knowing people in industries or on pathways that they're interested in lets learners experience what it's really like and connect with employers and others that can help facilitate their journey. Uh, thirdly is capacity, so a lack of time and space to fully engage with career planning was a barrier. Um, at the point of leaving school and figuring out what to do next, it's often learners' most academically challenging year yet. Um, and as we heard, 82% have other responsibilities that they're juggling at the same time. Um, practical demands on time and space do affect priority learners um, more. So for example, 84% of Pacific learners have responsibilities at home um, caring for family and whanau, and 51% of Māori learners do, compared to 15% of uh, the non-Māori and non-Pacific learners. Uh, the other side of that, of course, is that those extra responsibilities or experiences 
can be really uh, beneficial in exposing young people to work and to work concepts um, and helping learners to build transferable skills that they can then apply to work. The next barrier that we heard about is COVID, which was a game changer for some. So 23% of school leavers said their decisions were affected by COVID-19. Uh, those effects included having a negative impact on their mental well-being, preventing international travel, um, affecting the industry that they were wanting to get into, or affecting their ability to get the grades and credits that they needed. So for more than one of three, uh, more than one of three of the learners who were affected by COVID-19, it triggered a complete rethinking of their plan. And again, all of those um, negative effects of COVID were much more likely to impact TC priority groups. Uh, finally, systemic biases. So systemic bias leads to learners not having equal access to opportunities and resources, and it influences pathways. We saw learners are resilient in the face of that, but it does have an impact. For Māori and Pacific learners, um, we saw they're twice as likely to leave school with NCA level one or below, um, less likely to enter onto that university pathway. And when they were entering tertiary, it was more likely to be at foundation levels than other groups. And we saw those patterns um, were caused by streaming practices, um, socioeconomic inequalities and others, um, which we have uh, more detail on in the report. Um, we also saw for women, they were much more, uh, sorry, much less likely to enter apprenticeships than men. Uh, even when they were pursuing similar careers, women might be more um, likely to do so through the provider-based study pathways rather than work-based pathways which can have implications for their future debt, um, skills required and employability. So the next part of the report is about those key inputs into this transition decision. So the learner skills, knowledge and confidence needs. Firstly, I'm going to cover knowledge needs. So this section explores learners informational needs, where learners get information from, the usefulness of that information and then key influences as well. So in terms of informational needs, learners need four types of information to make this an informed decision. Firstly, they need orientating information, which is that knowledge about learner strengths, what they want, their values. Next was tailoring information, so knowledge about which pathway aligns with their learner values, their interests and their definitions of success. Then there's deep information which is that pivotal and often experiential information about what a pathway is really like. And then finally, logistical. So that practical, actionable information to get to that chosen pathway. So learners get information from three sources, people, experiences and static resources, with people being the most common channel for information. Parents and other family and whānau often have strong and interpersonal relationships, which often means they have strong personal influence. Some learners are even more likely to seek information and become aware of career aspirations through these personal connections. For example, 30% of Māori and 39% of Pacific school leavers knew family and whānau members who did their aspired job against 21% of non-Māori and non-Pacific students. But what we see is that sometimes that information school leavers get isn't that useful. So we mapped those who received against the usefulness of that information. What this tells us is that just that people go to and use information in different ways, but those informational needs are just not quite met. So there's room to improvement for all types of information sources. What we heard was that first-hand experiences of meeting role models, work experiences and gateway was the most useful sources of information in helping learners make this decision. These first-hand experiences and opportunities to trial pathways really increases confidence, reduces uncertainty and gives validation of pathways. There's a great quote from one of our learners who says, you wouldn't buy a car without testing it, so why would you do the same for a career? Static resources like websites are a really good starting point for many and careers.govt.nz is an especially trusted source, rating it as one of the most useful sources of information for learners 
but nearly 40% of school leavers had never even gone online for career advice. So for making this decision, we need to ensure all learners are equipped with these four types of information and support learners to connect with the world of work and those so useful first-hand experiences. This section looks at the skills that learners need to make their transition decision. Uh, we want to be clear here that when we say skills, we mean the skills for decision making rather than job specific skills for a particular role or transferable skills. We found that having the knowledge and right information like Sean covered is necessary, but it's not sufficient to make this transition decision. Learners need to be equipped with the appropriate decision making skills in order to make a choice that is likely to lead to their version of a fulfilling life. Up until the point of leaving school, the decisions that school leavers have had to make are almost exclusively those that have a right answer. And the way for them to figure this out often involves applying a formula or a specific procedure to uncover the answer, or possibly asking an expert for help who can point them towards the procedure or the answer itself. But the decision, what do I do when I leave school, is fundamentally different. It's often the first time that learners have had to make a decision like this before. And this type of decision is what we're calling a complex one. For complex decisions, there's no right answer and certainly not one that can be known before you make it. It's made up of lots of smaller decisions, it can impact others, and it can only be made with an imperfect set of information. School leavers aren't used to having to make this type of decision. And we see evidence that school, yet, school leavers haven't yet been equipped with the skills for making complex decisions either. And this is because the reasons that they find the decision difficult point to gaps in complex decision making skills. So for example, the top reasons that students found this decision difficult were because one, they didn't know how to compare different types of options. 44% said they didn't know how to choose an option or compare their pathways. And number two, they didn't know how to set a goal for the decision. So 38% said so they didn't know what they wanted. And number three, the stakes are paralyzing. 23% said that it was difficult because they struggled with the weight of the decision. Being inequipped with the right skills can lead to learners making decisions that don't align with what they want. Uh, for example, here in the bottom middle, Melody says, I really, really liked hotel management, probably because it's in different places and I want to go almost everywhere since you get to travel while you're working and you get paid. Here, Melody's doing a literal translation of what she enjoys, travel, to a pathway, tourism and hotel management, without really understanding that hotel management doesn't necessarily involve a lot of travel. Another example, Alison in the top middle. It takes seven years to do a business degree and I need that to be able to own my own business. Alison made her pathway decision based on incorrect information that she was provided because she hadn't been equipped with the skills to assess information validity and credibility. Her dream of opening a bakery was essentially over before she'd had a chance to explore it. Fundamentally, gaps in decision making skills lead to poorer outcomes for everyone. Uh, unnecessary costs for learners, unnecessary costs for the system, greater learner distress if they've chosen something that doesn't align with their ideas of success. So for better outcomes, school leavers need to be equipped with the appropriate decision making skills for these complex decisions. These skills include the abilities to assess the credibility and objectivity of information sources, to understand what their blind spots are and the, how those could affect their decision, to set goals and understand their values, focusing on the things that mean the most to them and understanding cognitive biases that can influence their thinking, and to weight, prioritise and compare different types of options where the costs and benefits of each aren't necessarily directly comparable. The next section covers uh, confidence needs for learners and the role that confidence plays in their transition decision. So 48% uh, of school leavers said that a lack of confidence was a barrier to doing what they wanted when they left school, uh, meaning that that site sat alongside cost as the most common barrier that learners face. And we saw that that lack of confidence came in two forms. Um, firstly, was that the whole thing feels overwhelming. Learners feeling that they have to get this decision right. It's going to determine the rest of my life. Um, 17 year olds saying it's too late to change path. 
because of subject choices that they'd made as early as year 10 meant that they were now locked in. Uh, the stakes can feel extremely high with no room to fail. And secondly, it's a lack of self-belief and confidence in their own abilities. So they don't always feel competent enough to do it. I'm going to share a quote from one of the learners who responded to our online survey. Um, I want to remind everyone that this learner took the time to write this out word for word in one of our open text boxes. I'm fearful. I fear the future so much, it's hard to describe it. I fear that I won't be able to make a life for myself. I fear that I won't get the grades I want that can lead me towards that field. I don't know if I have what it takes, the potential to study science or engineering. I'm not naturally smart, not at all. Every grade that I get is rooted in that fear. So I try my absolute best, so it ends up hurting even more when I don't get the grade. I want to do well. I want to be able to look at my life and say that I did it. I found a dream, I turned it into a goal, and I accomplished it. I want to succeed, but I'm scared. And this fear has helped me back and continues to do so. I'm scared of finishing high school so damn much. I'm scared of university, of choosing what to study. I'm scared. I'm so scared. So yeah, it's been extremely difficult. What we did hear from learners was the importance of champions um, to build confidence and enable success. So champions are people who provide guidance and support um, and let learners know that they do have someone in their corner who believes they can do it. They could be a parent or a family figure, a teacher, um, a student who's a couple of years ahead of them on their chosen pathway. So to wrap up this section, I'd encourage everyone uh, to take on that role of building confidence and empowering learners to take their next step um, and being that learner champion. The next section of the research looks at the different pathways learners take from secondary school. So here we explore the specific needs of school leavers who go on to either an apprenticeship, a polytech, a PTE, university, into the workforce, some other or neat pathway, and then those who are still undecided, even at that right to the point of leaving school. These are displayed in kind of handy one page infographics towards the end of the report, and I would encourage you to read in case you're interested in one particular pathway. Um, I'm just going to show quickly one of the undecided, the undecided group pathway and what their needs look like, because this might be a group that we know least about. So looking across the top of the page, you can see that 10% of all school leavers are still undecided about their next step. So kind of similar in size to those who are going to a PTE. We see evidence that these learners are typically finding this decision a lot more difficult. If you look at the left side of the infographic, there are some of the characteristics of undecided learners. We see learners who have needs across that spectrum of knowledge, skills and confidence. For example, they are much less likely to have confidence in their short, medium and long term future, less likely to have orientating information about what their passions or interests are, tailoring information about what those next steps mean for their career options and logistical information about their next step. On the right, feelings of being anxious, confused, sad, pressured, really typify what this pathway feels like for these learners. And you can also see that they often have experienced more barriers than the full cohort. So at the bottom, lack of money, availability of jobs in my area, family not supporting their choices. And yet at the top, we can see that they still expect to mostly leave with university entrance. So the undecided group is one that can definitely benefit from all our support. So we'd encourage you to think about how much your mahi can really make a difference for undecided learners. So that concludes just some of the main findings from this work. Just to wrap up and remind you of some of the key takeaways from this research. So number one, 
the school leaver population is diversifying and learners have a wide range of backgrounds and needs. Number two, a fulfilling life and career often means pursuing enjoyment and happiness, but career aspirations reflect a balancing act between values and practical considerations. Number three, systemic biases are impacting learner success. Number four, even with all the information, learners can only use it effectively when they have the appropriate decision making skills. And then finally, number five, confidence is impacting success, affecting almost half of learners. So that was just a quick run through of the research. There's obviously a lot more in there which we can find in the full report at your own time, but hopefully that gives you a flavour of some of the findings. Yamehi Nui Kiyakoto. Thank you for your time, attention and respect for these learners' journeys. I'll now hand back to Anna to facilitate the Q&A and close the session. Kia ora, Sean. Thanks, team. I can see there are lots of questions and comments in the chat, so I am going to attempt to run through those. I noticed the first few are all around the data and whether there are different breakdowns. And I think in most cases, the answer to that is yes. And we'll come back to you with what those breakdowns are if they're not in the report already, um, rather than trying to dig, dig them all out now. So I will scoot on to maybe... Um, Trent has a question on career aspirations. Um, do you have the career aspirations organised by ethnicity? And is there anything that we could say about that now, perhaps, team? And I can jump in with that one. So unfortunately, we didn't have quite enough statistical power to um, show the same kinds of results by different ethnic groups. Um, but there are potentially some indications, I think, in the appendix. Appendix B of the report contains the full list of um, career aspirations beyond those top 11 as well. Cool. Um, question from Joanne. Taha2 is planning to include Māori pathways not currently mapped or included in careers.gov.nz. Were any of Māori or Pacific pathways mentioned by students in the survey and can we find this information in the report? They're nodding. <laughs> yes, so I, jump I in think as well. that's a yes. <laughs> there were a couple. Um, for example, I um, one of the learners I interviewed was um, pursuing a career in Fakairo. Um So yeah, there are some of those in there too. Um, and Sherry raises a really good point here. Kia ora, Sherry. Are practical considerations necessarily bad? between a gig job like an actor and a stable job like a teacher, maybe a stable job is a good first start and the dream job can be further down the road. I think that's a really good point. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, you're absolutely right. I can jump in here. Um, I think, yeah, you're right in terms of like, uh, it, we, we were just trying to explore how people actually made decisions and understanding that people do make decisions because of practical considerations. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, we totally agree with that, with what you're saying. I think probably the main reason that it could be a concern is that it's causing a lot of distress and that's where the decision-making skills come in. As um, a lot of learners we spoke to felt like it's it's not okay for to, to not know and to be having to balance these things. And if I don't do my dream, then I'm losing out on my enjoyment value. But if I don't, you know, become a, a, a really stable job like a tradesperson, then I'm not supporting my family. And it's there's a lot of internal conflict reflected there. And we also saw evidence of people making practical considerations, but then those jobs weren't actually leading to sort of jobs that were in the sort of the future labour market needs as well. So people were making these practical considerations, but then it's not really aligning to a job that they could have in the future as well. So. Um, yeah, we see all, saw evidence of that for sure. Um, yeah, thanks Erica for mentioning tradecareers.nz, helpful for young women like Monique wanting to go into trades. Um, Jessica asks, is there any scope for reviewing our study link processes and allocations to support financial viability for our Congo? And I think that's that's definitely potentially one solution to those cost barriers that we should be looking at. Thanks, Jessica. Um, 
Thank you, Sadna, for your comment. Kia ora koutou. It's so valuable learning about the New Zealand learners and school leaver, their school life and Fano dream career choice and versus real career choice. Was this the first research and will TEC continue with this research? Um, so I guess I could answer that one. Um, so this was the first foundational piece of research conducted by the Insights team at TEC. Um, and yes, we will be continuing. We have, we've got plans to continue looking at transitions from secondary school, first of all. We're really hoping that we're going to be able to recontact some of the participants from this research and find out what they're doing now um, and how that journey has progressed from when we spoke to them a couple of years ago. And we're also exploring and scoping some research to look at different perspectives around the transition as well. So speaking to teachers, principals, employers, TEOs um, to understand their perspective. So potentially we'll be reaching out to some of you with um, for some help with that. Um, and then we're also carrying out um, foundational research with different groups of learners. Um, we've done some research with learners in foundation education, which we hope to be able to share with you in the next few months. OK. Um, I think, yeah, a really popular comment here, obviously a huge need to have quality, well-resourced careers advice to be available to this cohort, both in school and outside of school. Careers advisors have been highlighting this need for a very long time and the hours provided in most schools are pitiful. And that's possibly a preview to some of the findings that we might have from that next phase of research. And we'll just definitely be exploring that and taking it to the people that need to know that in the future. Um, Thanks, Liz. Kia ora. It would be fabulous if TEC recognised the success outcome of Gateway as being transitioned into full-time employment. Currently, if the student moves from Gateway into employment before finishing their 20 credits, they or the school is penalised. Um, yeah, I think that's a recognised problem with the way that we look at outcomes and actually moving into employment is the end goal. And if they do that early, then that's a great thing. Totally agree. Um, has your analysis been drilled down to the regional and district levels? Do you want to take that? Um, there are a few kind of different sub answers to that, I think. So within the IDI, we can drill down uh, regionally. Um, with the survey, we didn't have enough power to target specific regions. And I think in the appendix it references, there are some regions that are overrepresented and under vice versa. Um, the way that we wanted to, or that we could try and mitigate that risk was by balancing it out with the interviews. So yeah, with the interviews, we particularly um, ask to be connected with learners who weren't as well represented in the survey especially and so th those uh, different sources kind of yeah, mitigate that risk. Um, and we may be able to break the IDI data down, yeah. Thank you. Darren. Um, Jessica's comment, I think we need to build capability with all teachers and school staff. Every person should be able to engage in a careers conversation with our conga, demystifying it and making it OK to ask those hard questions. I think that's a great point. And yeah, this, this idea that learners can have champions and it could be a range of people within their school, people that they connect to would really help. Um, Want to totoku the request from Tararua Reap and Manawatu Whanganui here in Whanganui Atara. It would be great to get the regional data. Yes, we've thought about that. Um, how can we access this report and slide deck? Um, we'll be sharing it. It's already shared on our website. You've put a link in already, have you, Bridget? Thanks. Um, so that should be there for you now. What are the next steps for TEC to action and support these issues you have highlighted from Stephanie? Somebody like to talk through the next steps for TEC? Yeah, I can take this one. So yeah, so the work's really been feeding into one of our big um, strategic priorities, which is about um, an integrated career response. So we've got um, work programs um, and projects within that that we're feeding directly into. So we've got the online career um, planning solution, which is Tahatu, where we're thinking about like we're working really collaboratively with the team to think about how we can design and develop 
products and content and um, real tools that like are confidence building, are culturally affirming, that really meet the needs of learners. So lots of engagement with that team. Um, yeah, likewise with the national career um, strategies um, as well. So we're really engaging with um, that team to think about, yeah, how can learners needs be fell into that, uh, fall into that um, career strategy as well. And then just sort of generally, we're like lots of sharing across the TEC and we really want to help support more learner centric decisions and sort of, yeah, um, building everybody across the TEC's understanding of learners so that it all fits, feeds into how we can best support them as well. So yeah, lots of work that we're doing to promote and share the research and embed it into our work. Go to Sean. Um, question here from Jaron. Um, are there plans to follow up on the cohorts of this study in one year and three years to see what the actual journey entails? I've talked about contacting some of the participants, but uh, there's potentially some other work we're going to do in the IDI. Um, really keen to follow up on those and have kind of a longer term view of the outcomes of school leavers. So yes, is the short answer. Um, lots of great comments. Thank you. Um, Do you, want to, do you want to just read that one out, Bridget? Well, I've just seen one, uh, Andre, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, about what proportion of the findings were based on IDI data versus surveys. So um, the things that the IDI can tell us, um, uh, it's a highly accurate data about actual school leavers, every single one of them in the country. So a lot of the um, demographic characteristics, the information about where they come from, where they go to, um, school leaving results, any of that kind of uh, hard big data comes from the IDI where possible. And um, the things that the IDI can't tell us are what's in learners' heads. So anything uh, to do with beliefs, thoughts, opinions, experiences, that comes from the survey and the interview and integrated together as well. Thanks, Bridget. Um, great question here from Beth. Just checking what were the reasons behind the research and did you have results that surprised you? Uh, yeah, I can jump in on that one. Um, reasons behind the research. Um, uh, main one was around building a shared understanding of this learner group within TEC. Um, we know it's a really important group from our careers um, service offerings and from the investment point of view as well. Um, so yeah, really as an insight team, we wanted to create that um, and then be able to share it more widely like we're doing now. Um, and then as well, um, also knowing that we'd be able to feed it into different initiatives within TEC. So as I think have been mentioned, um, Taha too, the online career solution um, and the career system strategy. Um, but yeah, the the reason was um, was kind of going across projects, not just one in particular. Um, and then results that surprised us. I think we probably did all have things that surprised us a little bit. Um, yeah, I think for me, one maybe was that, that cost barriers and confidence barriers are equal. Um, I think we sort of mentioned that, yeah, TC plays a lot in um, trying to reduce cost barriers or address cost barriers um, through things like fees free. Uh, but yeah, knowing that confidence um, from learners perspective was as common a barrier was quite interesting. I'm not sure if the others want to jump in on surprising. Like, um, yeah, I, I think I definitely think the confidence thing was a massive surprise for me as well. I didn't realize how much of an impact cost um, confidence would be having on the decision. So that was as big of a barrier as cost, which was just I think was like really wow. Um, and then yeah, that point about sort of making decisions that don't really align with your version of, of success. So learners really needing decision making skills because they're leading to outcomes that don't really align to what they want was actually a really interesting finding, I think, for me as well. So, oh, right. I think that's a really 
great place to wrap up. So I'm really sorry if I haven't got to any of your questions, but we will go through them and come back to you individually after this session. So thank you all for a really great session. We're so pleased to see that everyone else is as interested and excited about this work as we are. And yeah, please do get in touch if we can support your mahi further. I have a karakia to close, so please join me on mute in the last line or more if you know it. Unuhia, unuhia, unuhia ki te uru tapunui, ki a watea, ki a mama, te nako, te tinana, te wairua, i te ara takata, koe e rongo, fakairia ake ki runga, ki a tina, tina, huie, tai kie. Kakite. <laughs>